Welcome to the 2013 Annual Meeting of the American Academy of Neurology in San Diego. This is the world's largest gathering of neurologists with nearly 12,000 attendees who are here to learn the latest scientific research advances in brain disease. My name is Andy Imholt and I'll be moderating today's press conference. We are joined by members of the press in attendance at the annual meeting and by conference call. Today we welcome Dr. Lisa DeAngelis, Chair of the American Academy of Neurology's Science Committee. The, this committee is responsible for selecting the more than 2,300 scientific presentations accepted for presentation this week at the Academy's annual meeting. Dr. DeAngelis is also Chair of the Department of Neurology and Co-Executive Director of the Brain Tumor Center at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Dr. DeAngelis has been gracious enough to make herself available to you today for a question and answer session as to what she believes is the most significant research advances being presented this week at the annual meeting and those research presentations you should be sure to attend. We'll take questions first by those in attendance in San Diego and then from those on the phone. Please use the microphone provided when asking questions and remember to identify yourself and your media outlet. Just a reminder, there's no embargo on the information shared in this presentation. Welcome, Dr. DeAngelis. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. It's really a pleasure to talk about the scientific program that we have prepared for this week. And I think I would like to start by highlighting some of the very exciting presentations we're going to be having at our plenary sessions. Um, the first is uh, at the Hot Topics uh, plenary session in Tuesday evening, where we're going to be discussing several of the of very timely topics, such as the fungal meningitis outbreak that has taken place as a consequence of contaminated steroids that was used for spinal injections. We're also going to hear about uh, the potential underlying mechanism of cognitive impairment and memory decline associated with radiotherapy to the brain for patients who have brain tumors. And Michelle Manji is going to discuss this and how neural stem cells seem to play an important role in this um, cognitive impairment and memory loss. In other plenary sessions, in the contemporary clinical issues session on Wednesday, will be a discussion of multiple sclerosis and how a single radiologic uh, event or a clinical event with a radiologic correlate um, in those patients, what their five-year long-term risk is of developing the full spectrum of multiple sclerosis. During that session, we're also going to hear uh, on a separate uh, discussion about neuroplasticity uh, in people with MS and how that can lead to functional recovery, lead to or potentially impair functional recovery for patients. In our frontiers in translational neuroscience program, we have Nobel laureate Roger Sen speaking on neuroinflammatory disease processes and neuroimaging. Um, and I think that's going to be an extremely exciting talk. We're also going to hear about ALS and new drugs and drug therapies that are being proposed. And in fact, in the clinical trials, uh, program on Friday. We, there will be two presentations on the EMPOWER study, which examined, <coughs> excuse me, um, examined um, a, a novel drug for ALS and whether or not that is going to be uh, useful, dexpramipexol, and to uh, see whether that actually helps improve the outcome for patients with ALS. On Friday uh, evening, when we traditionally have had the Scientific Highlights program, this year instead we are going to have the year in review in which we are taking six major neurologic topics such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, and experts in the field will not only present the highlights in their field from this meeting, but present the latest uh, scientific highlights in their field from the entire year, whether that was presented at this meeting or not. So it should prove to be a wonderful encapsulation of all of the high points in these areas. As for some of the interesting science that's being presented at this meeting, um, I'd like to just mention a few of the abstracts. One is um, an examination 
of the importance of blood pressure control and particularly the use of beta blockers as um, potential prevention for the pathology of Alzheimer's disease and microinfarcts. So this is a component of the Honolulu Asia Aging Study in which the examination of the brains of patients uh, who have died and knowing their clinical condition in terms of cognitive function, and then looking at their blood pressure control and finding that the use of beta blockers in particular dramatically reduced the appearance of the pathologic features of Alzheimer's in the brains and the pathologic features of microinfarcts or small strokes. And this work goes to, uh, to the growing uh, body of evidence that vascular risk factors play an important role in dementia and cognitive decline in our elderly population. And this is important because va vascular risk factors can frequently be treated or prevented. And then something perhaps close to, uh, to your heart, if you are like me and a coffee drinker, um, there's an interesting epidemiologic study looking at people who drink four more cups of coffee a day and have a modest reduction in the risk of depression, um, whereas those who drink uh, fruit punch or um, sodas have a significantly increased risk of depression. So I'm not here touting any particular uh, brand, but you know that your ability to get coffee is almost everywhere in the convention center, so I would say help yourself. Um, and then um, just a few comments about women's neurologic health is a feature of a number of abstracts that will be presented this, um, at this meeting. So those who suffer from migraine with aura, a very common condition, there was an increased risk of heart attack and stroke in those patients who have migraine with aura, but not migraine without aura. And likewise, in a separate study, uh, women with migraine and uh, with aura who also take contraceptives have a dramatically increased risk in blood clots and that the two factors, both the contraceptive use and the migraine uh, history, appear to um, conspire against those women. Likely, those young women with, uh, who have undergo surgical menopause for another reason and who are thrown into menopause early in life, they can suffer a greater risk of cognitive decline. And the use of hormone replacement therapy can dramatically slow that decline. And that's uh, an important observation for women who find themselves in that condition. Finally, in our emerging science session, where we've had really a number of wonderful submissions this year, in fact, it was very difficult for us to um, select the 22 or so abstracts that are being presented, 12 of, of which will be presented with a data blitz and a poster, and then the others will have just a poster. Um, so I urge you to look at all of them. But I wanted to highlight two studies in uh, Parkinson's disease that address significant quality of life issues for those patients. Many patients with Parkinson's disease also suffer from something called orthostatic hypotension, which is a drop in blood pressure whenever you stand up. And many of these patients will frequently fall or feel quite dizzy whenever they um, go from sitting to standing or lying to standing, and can be a very serious problem because they can injure themselves when they fall. And the drug droxydopa appears to dramatically reduce the number of falls associated with this condition and the episodes of dizziness. So that will be welcome news for those patients. In addition, another drug, tozadenant, also showed that it could significantly prolong the effect of levodopa in, those, uh, in patients with Parkinson's disease. So as patients with PED, <coughs> progress over the course of their illness. For many of them, the effects of levodopa wear off over time, and they may spend part of the day in the so-called uh, off 
mode, if you will, as if, as if the levodopa has no benefit. And this drug dramatically reduces the time, the off time during the course of the day for these patients. So that's a, a major um, advancement for them. And so this is really just um, a small sampling. Um, of course, I don't, uh, can't give you the details of all the 2,300 plus abstracts that we have here, but um, this is really a sample of some of the really tremendous things that we'll be hearing about over the course of the week.